Hey everyone, hi, it's Tim Totten with a Final Embrace, and I am here today to talk to you about um, something I know you're looking to get into, and that is how to cut fabric easier using something other than just a simple old pair of scissors. And so some of you may have like gone in, in, into the store and seen rotary cutters, maybe you've watched videos and you see people use these. I'm here today to talk to you about how to use a rotary cutter, how we use them to make our stuff so much faster, and also... Um, to make sure that you use them properly. So uh, in, in honor of my new Facebook friend, his name is Ryan. He has a, a company he's just started called Masks by Ryan and look him up on social media or online. I think masksbyryan.com. Uh, Ryan is, because he is currently running limited number of flights as a flight attendant, as the airline industry is a little slower, I am going to teach you the safety features of these amazing rotary cutters. Now I have a couple here. These two are both 60 millimeter rotary cutters. These two now. Um, and then this one is a 45 millimeter rotary cutter. They make a 30 millimeter. They make different sizes. I prefer the 60 millimeter size. And for those of you who, uh, like me, are American and we're raising the American education system, 60 millimeters is just the distance, the diameter of how big this is. And uh, basically two and a half centimeters or so is, is a an inch, so I don't know, do some math, you can figure it out. But either way, it's a nice big one. I have the three sizes here. I don't really like this particular version and it's not because of uh, the brand or anything. It's just a little more plasticky and it doesn't feel as strong to me. So I don't really like to use it very often. I'm gonna set that one aside. I'm gonna show you the two Olfas. And uh, they go usually with a grid of some kind. So there's, I have two here, this is a smaller grid. And this is made by a company called Easy Quilting. So, and it's a, it's a six and a half inch square, great. And then I'm gonna show you on a eight and a half by 24 grid as well. Nice thing about these is that um, they both have safety features. And um, you'll notice that your overwing exit, no, sorry, I can't keep it going, Ryan. Um, this one has a, a safety like you would see on a firearm, which means when you try to pull the trigger, so to speak, you can't get it to open up. And that makes you less likely to cut yourself with the blade. But if I push the button, then of course I can squeeze the trigger and it will expose the blade. And look on this side, this one happens to be Lori's. She works in our workshop here, Final Embrace. I'm gonna squeeze and you see how that blade pops out. Ooh, dangerous, don't get into a fight with Lori. So when I squeeze, I'm able to go down and, and cut. Same thing with this particular version. And this one's nice if you're gonna share this with somebody else or you're somewhat ambidextrous. Cause if I pull the lower one, it then see exposes the blade and it lets me go with my right hand. But the person in our office who uses this, her name is Roseanne, and she didn't write her name on this because we all know it's hers. She can pull the other side because she's left-handed and she can therefore take it in her left hand. The reason you want the blade towards your other hand is you have to use both hands. One hand is gonna be on the, the grid, the other hand is gonna be on the, the cutting uh, implement. So let's set aside the smaller one because I'd rather use the one that I'm most comfortable with, the larger one. Always like it bigger, better. I'm going to show you how you can freehand with this. Now, I want you to understand, this is not designed for you to put your hand down and cut real close because you will free yourself of this hand. Don't do that. You want to put your hand a little bit farther away and you're going to cut somewhere else. So I'm just going to cut this one freehand in a shape that I like if you're going around a template of some kind. And so now that's cut. But you're not usually going to do that. Most of the time, you're going to be using one of the grids. Let's put this grid out of the way for a moment. I'll use the smaller one. Let's say I want, I know I need a line across here. So I'm going to put that down and I'm going to cut along the side. I'm going to put my hand down to hold the fabric and the grid together. I'm going to open up, put it below the fabric. So I'm going to start down here at the edge where the fabric kind of meets and I'll cut past it. I'll leave my hand holding this and then pull the fabric away. That makes sure if it were to snag, I could go back and roll it again. It's important to know that while this may look like a pizza cutter, it's not actually for cutting pizza. Get an actual pizza cutter for pizza. This is a fabric cutting blade and it only cuts in one direction. Yes, it, it's just like Harry and Niall and all those guys, one direction. We're going to cut in one simple direction. We don't come back, we don't do this, even if we feel like there's fabric miss parts missing, we don't come back and use it in the other row. That's number one, because you're just gonna, you're more likely to mess up what you're cutting. But secondly, you don't want to cut your finger off and this keeps you going in one place. So let's say I cut it rather lightly, or maybe I went off because I didn't hold my fabric close enough. And you'll notice I have a little extra fabric left over here. Well, then I can come in here and just by leaving my hand down, I can cut it back and that'll take that other piece off. 
Let's show you though more with the larger cutting piece. So let's say I'm making a mask that requires a something that is, I don't know, let's say um, six inches by nine inches. I have a nice straight edge over here, but if I didn't, I would have to straighten it up first. But let's say I'm gonna use that nice straight edge on the side and I'm gonna use my cutter. This one's eight and a half inches wide. So I can probably get six inches out of the width here and then cut nine the other direction. I'm gonna go to my six inch line over here and put that right along the edge, right? So I do that, it's lined up. Maybe I have to straighten the fabric out or maybe all this one I'll actually come over a little bit, kind of about six and a quarter. And I, I, my hands are not big enough to cover this whole thing. If I left my hand way up here and started cutting down here, I might push this out because you do have to push over a little to keep yourself on there. So I'll put my hand down at the end. Remember, I got plenty of room between my hand and the edge here. And I'm only gonna cut along the fabric from my thumb up to my tallest finger because I can put pressure. I'm putting pressure straight down and I'm gonna put pressure down with this and in a little bit. So I line it up next. I'm going in a little and I'm gonna go that way and going down. I only go to the end of my fingers. I'm gonna leave the cutter right where it is and leave the base right where it is. And I'm gonna walk my hand up farther and cut the rest of the way. Then I'm gonna leave my hand down on the fabric and pull this piece away. Okay, perfect, it's been cut properly. But it's still a little over the eight because I wanted this a nice straight edge. So I'll turn this thing around. And I'm gonna come in and put this to my six inch mark. Did I say eight earlier? I don't know, I always like bigger numbers. So we go here to the six, it's all lined up directly along there, all the way lined up. Now I've got a little bit quarter of an inch left over. Cut that off, perfect. Now I've got to get my nine inches the other direction. So I'll turn this sideways. Now I don't have a straight edge over here, obviously, because it's actually a surged edge. So let's go, and here, the interesting part about this one is I don't have a nine inch wide ruler, but if it was, I could do that. I'm gonna go here to nine inches along this way and put it about nine and a half or nine and a quarter. And this time I'm gonna line up the bottom line here. See these lines, I'm gonna line those up and I'll just chop off here. So I'm gonna hold it out of the way, flip it around. Now I'll line up the nine inches that are, or that is over here. I'll line up nine inches along the edge. And by using one of the lines this way as well as this way, it makes sure I've got a 90 degree angle. Hand down to hold it, cut off, perfect. Now I have a six by nine square that's been cut out, or rectangle, it's not a square. Squares have the same size each side. Now the other thing to, that you might wanna do on your grid is uh, you'll notice on this particular grid, the small one, it doesn't have any feet or cushioning on the back. And sometimes it can slide around really easily. So it can make it harder for you to cut if you're brand new. We have found these little pieces that are like, they're almost like little sticky feet. And you can put those on so that when you put that on your fabric, it really holds. This is not going anywhere. I'm having to really push it to get it to move. So those are the safety features of these amazing rotary cutting devices. Hopefully, if you put some Band-Aids near you, you're probably still gonna cut yourself accidentally because they are Mondo super sharp. But maybe this will help you be a little safer when you're cutting with a rotary cutter. Bye for now.